Church of Christ here in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome to the down sitting, the feast. But before I begin, doesn't the table look beautiful? Yeah. yeah. I want to thank the, the ushers, the greeting staff, the kitchen ministry. There was a lot of unity involved with this, a lot of agape love. Well, of course, you know, that comes from the host. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what we're going to do this morning is that we're going to um, fellowship. You know how families do at, um, at the table. We're going to talk. Um, there's going to be some introspection, um, singing, All right. praise, yeah. worship, yeah. Um, sacrificial giving, uh -huh. a lot of agape love. Um, we're going to get to know each other. Yeah. And, uh, we just want you to sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the um, event. Um, oh, um, before I take my seat, I forgot uh, one thing. This came with a course. Yeah. 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 Somebody's going to pay for this. Right, right, right. <laughs> we can't do it. Amen. Yeah. It's not enough. Mm. But our Lord and Savior. Yes. Jesus Christ, he took the tab, mm. he paid it all. Amen. We're good, family. Amen. We're good. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have come today to celebrate. We've come to give God thanks. We have come to reflect and to remember the way uh, Christ did, how he did. Today we are going back to see how he did. And we are going to follow that pattern for today and for another Sunday in the week. Now, in the books of uh, John, not John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, there is a story of Christ being plotted against, being betrayed, went to the garden to pray. And in that story, he introduced the Passover because that was their purpose. So today we will reflect on the Passover meal and how it is. But I'll pick up from Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 16. There it is. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There, make ready. So they went and found it just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, He sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, family, you want to know something? 
about all of this that's here for us. Christ makes sure that men with a past has a past that's past. Don't worry. Get excited because your past, which you had, it's already past because of what Christ did for us. Amen? So as we reflect, as we remember what he did and we look back on that, that century and that time, let us celebrate today in this town sitting, knowing that all that happened to us is past. In, in Ephesians uh, 2, it says, And you who were once dead in trespass and sins, but Christ made you alive. We're not dead, we're alive. Amen. We're going to say, we're going to celebrate, and we're going to give them our thanks for this time. Amen? Amen. Let us bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're thankful for you waking us up this day. And we're thankful for this church. We're thankful for the membership. And Father, today we come, dear God, to reflect, to remember the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Where Christ, dear God, he knew, dear Father, what would take place with him. But Father, he asked his disciples to go to prepare. And they went and they prepared. And he made them, dear Father, know, dear God, that what he is doing, dear Father, would be carried on for centuries. And today we have come, we have come, dear Father, with this beautiful table spread before us to remember, dear God, the price that was paid. Help us as we celebrate. Help us, dear Father, as we party. Help us, dear Father, to always be thankful for Christ, for what he did for us. For Father, we were people full with sin. But what he did, dear God, and we've been obedient to your will. And now, dear Father, have that privilege to the tree of life. We thank you, dear God. We ask that you bless us. We ask that you keep us. And help us, dear Father, to remember that our past is no more. For we are in Christ Jesus. Bless us to your service. Help us to love. Help us to care. For Christ, he first loved us. We love you and we ask it all in no other name but our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus
price that was paid by her parents uh, for her engagement anyway. So she sweeps that house until she finds that one. She only had 10 coins, but she lost one and sweeps that house until she finds it. And when she finds it, Jesus tells the story. She calls her neighbors and says, I found what was lost. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Then the third story, it is all the same message told three times. The first story is about a sheep that has gone astray as the shepherd finds it. The second story is a coin that falls out the purse and a woman sweeps till she finds it. The third story is a son. Went from 100 sheep to 10 coins to two sons. And one son, look, the sheep wanders off. Right. The coin falls out, but the son rebels yeah. against his father, yeah. breaks his heart, right. and says, you know, give me my portion now. Right. Basically saying, I wish you were dead so I could get my will right. now. Give me what belongs to me now. And the father amazingly does it, gives it away. Amen. And the son sells it. Goes out to a strange land and parties until he's got nothing. He's now broke, destitute, starving. Uh, but he makes his way home. Uh, we'll probably take another. I'm not going to mess up the dinner today to straighten that. Coming to you. He came to himself saying, Dang, there ain't nothing in that. Uh, but he comes home, and when the father sees him afar off, he runs to the son. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Son has got his whole plan. Right, right, right. Uh, his his whole Speech. oration yeah, yeah. of how he's going to work his way back in. But the father interrupts that, runs through the village. Right. Y'all go back and read it. Read it with Hollywood eyes next time. <laughs> he runs through the village and he embraces his son. Yeah. And before his son can go into the speech, he tells his servant to bring him a robe, bring sandals for his feet, give him a ring to put on his finger so he can escort him safely back to the house. So those three stories, a uh, sheep that was lost, the shepherd searches to find it, a coin that was lost, fell out, the woman sweeps to find it. And a son who rebelled, the father runs to find him. Uh, you, uh, I know you want to know, how does that, what does that got to do with the table? What does that got to do with the cross? Well, the reason Jesus told those three stories, lost sheep, lost coin, lost son, a, a searching shepherd, a sweeping woman, and a running father, he tells those three stories to answer a criticism that the Pharisees lobbied against him. And what was the criticism in chapter 15, verse 1? They looked at how Jesus sat at the table mm. right, right. and ate mm. with sinners Come on. and publicans. Yeah. Now, they were right. Right. Anybody going to say amen? Help us. They were right in their criticism All right. that Jesus, who's supposed to be righteous, yeah. Yeah. is at the table with those who are unclean. Yeah. Because he wasn't just with folk that perhaps were not overly righteous like the, like the Pharisees. But he was with guys like Peter. God, come on, you have to go back to that time. Now we revere Peter. But back then, church folk didn't have respect for fishermen. Didn't have respect for unlearned men. Didn't, would not consider being at the table with guys like Simon. Yeah, yeah. The zealot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's an old term for mafia. Yeah. Jesus was at the table yeah. with a known member 
of the Jewish mafia. Y'all go back and do your study. And Jesus was at the table with a guy like Matthew, who was a publican. Right, right. The publican was the one who betrayed the people, took money from the people, put some money in his pocket, and gave some to the Roman officials that gave him power. And guess what? Jesus at the table with guys like that. Not just with guys like that, women like Mary of, not his mother. Right, right, right. Mary of Magdalene. Yeah. Oh, y'all know what? Yeah, yeah. Y'all know what a woman has to do to be named after a city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a city place. Yeah. Mary Magdalene. Uh, uh, and other, other sinners. And other folk that the righteous had deemed untouchable. Jesus was at the table. And the table back then, I talked to you this last year, or uh, two years ago, is that the table is more than just a place for food. Yes. Right. Right. The table is a place of covenant. Yeah. Yes. The table says that I'm part yeah. of you. Yeah. And this is what I mean by the Pharisees was right. In that culture, in that time, you needed to be careful with who you sat at the table with. Because at the table, not, not, not just at that time, but at this time. You need to be careful right. about who you're at the table with. Yeah. They'll take pictures of you. Right. You're, running, <laughs> you're running for government. They'll take pictures with you of you at a restaurant. <laughs> Why? Because who you eat with makes a statement. Go right. well, back to the story. Jesus, they criticized Jesus for eating with those who were unclean, who were obviously lost, who were sinners. To answer the criticism, Jesus doesn't say shut up like we would. Leave me alone. I'm going to do mine. Jesus, to answer the criticism, gives the message that when a sheep is lost, even though you've got 100, you'll leave 99 to search and find. Right. When a coin is lost, fell out. What will you do? You'll sweep the house until you find the one that is lost. And if you got two sons and one of them rebels and breaks your heart, what will you do? You'll run through the village. And, and, and even if you don't, what Jesus is really saying is this is what God does. God is the shepherd that searches till he finds. God is the woman that sweeps the house until he finds his law. And God is the father who will run through the village to find the son that's lost. Why are you telling us what God will do to find the lost? Because that's why Jesus is sitting at the table with sinners. Yeah. The shepherd searches, the woman sweeps, the father runs, and the son is at the table yes, sir. with the law. Yes, sir. Not to eat, not to fill himself, but to establish a relationship yes, sir. with those that would have never been accepted. Mercy. That's where you and I come in. Because I don't ever want you to think that we're so righteous that we can look at anybody. We're the ones at the table. Every time, every Sunday that we come together, this is the message. Every Sunday that we come together and we eat the bread and drink the cup, we are at a covenant table with the Lord. We don't deserve it. We never earned it. But the reason that we're at the table is because just like the shepherd sought the lost, the woman swept the house, and the father ran through the city, Jesus went to the cross. Amen. Why? Because we would be lost without his efforts to save us. Yeah, yeah. And like he sat at the table with the lost then, he's sitting at the table with those who would otherwise be lost now. Because of what happened on Calvary. That's why when we drink the bread, not just bread, represents the body that was broken on Calvary. Why? To save the lost. 
we drink the cup, not just uh, for tradition, not just uh, because of taste, not for nourishment, but the cup points to, it's a sign, it represents the blood that was shed on Calvary. Yeah. For what purpose? To save the lost. Yes, and so when we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we remember not a shepherd running or, or searching, not a woman sweeping, not a father running through the city. But remember, God came down, became flesh, lived a perfect life, and he went to Calvary so that we publicans, yeah. sinners, yeah. we Simons, yes. we Peters, yes. we Marys, mm -hmm. we could all be at the table with the righteous yeah. and remember and rejoice over this great salvation. Amen. And so we have the table for us even now to point our minds and our hearts back to Calvary where Jesus died so that we could be saved. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for such great love. A love that moved you to send your only begotten your best so that we can be in a relationship with you. Father, we acknowledge that without your intervention, yeah. without your plan, yeah. that we never would have made it to you. Yes, we would be completely, utterly, totally lost. Yes. Yes. Like a sheep that's yes. born astray. Yes. Yeah. Or like a coin mm. that's fallen out of the purse. Mm. And like a son that's filled with himself we would never have made it back home. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But thank you for coming and sending your son to look for us, yeah. to sweep for us, yeah. to run for us, yeah. to die for us, yes. so that we could be part <coughs> of a covenant with you. Yeah. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for the body broken. The blood that was shed so that we could have this relationship with you. Yeah. Thank you for forgiveness Thank you. of all of our sins. Thank you. Thank you for mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Giving us what we don't deserve. Yeah. Thank you for continued grace. Yeah. That even when we fail and fall and stumble as we do every day, yes. that you continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for such excellent salvation through what happened on Calvary. Father, as we eat this bread and drink this cup and we think about Jesus, help us, Father, to not only celebrate and be glad, but help us, Father, to commit to the life that you have given us. The life that is the light yeah. that points men and women to your great love. Yes. Help us, Father, to love one another. Yeah. Help us, Father, to not judge one another, but to encourage yeah. one another yeah. to walk in that way and to live that life. Thank you again for this family, for this table. And thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. From 662. There is a fountain filled with love drawn from Emmanuel's face and
moving on kind of culture. Uh, we we dim the lights on fellowship and turn up the lights on convenience. Uh, right. But now we want to do more of showing that love for one another. So just for a few minutes, because of what Jesus has done, let's make sure that we're loving one another. Maybe somebody that you don't know. Maybe it's time for you to go. And even if you don't shake your hand, even if you don't hug, bump the shoulder or, or elbow, fist pound. This is how you do fist pound. I love you, brother. <laughs> I just took a little bit on the last part, but it's all right. Uh, uh, but, but let's love one another. Let's not take this fellowship for granted. Let's not take what God has done through Christ and just be regular. And be normal. So for a few minutes, stand up where you are and go see somebody you ain't seen in a while. Or go meet somebody that you don't know in your fellowship. And let's show some COVID level love for one another. Church isn't the most interesting thing. Hi, darling. Yes, yes. 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 Yes.
his teachings, his death, burial, and resurrection. Because you believe in that gospel, then you ought to follow him as Lord. Some people say make him Lord. You can't make him Lord. He's already Lord. You need to follow him. Commit to him as Lord. And if you're not a Christian, and that commitment, that means confessing him to be the son of God and then being baptized. That's when your sins are washed away, you filled with the spirit. And as you come out of the waters of baptism, then you can walk in the newness of life. So if you're not a Christian, you're invited to the table, not just to eat, not just to drink, but to be in fellowship with the one that the table represents. Yes, sir. And if you are a member of the body of Christ, for most of us here, see a service like this kind of breaks the routine. Yeah, right. I understand a little bit about how our brains work <coughs> and we can hide behind a routine. Yeah. We can just go through the motions. Uh -huh. But every now and then something will stop you. Thank, good, thank God it's a good thing like this yeah, that can break your routine and make you think. Because there's some other things that can break your routine and yeah. make you think. But a good learning time make you consider where you are and who you are Amen. and how your life is. And as we say the song of invitation, that's not just a time for those outside to come into the body, but it's a time for the rest of us yeah. who are in the house yep. to consider our lives Amen. and to make some change. You want to make a change? You want to recommit? You want to, you want to turn around from something that you're doing? And he wants to be praying with you, praying for you, um, to, to give you counsel. And now you come up to the front. If you want some change, you want to repent, you want to respond to such great grace, then now's a good time for you to come. We'll be praying for you uh, throughout the weeks to come. As we sing the song of invitation. That's an invitation to greater walk, an invitation to a better life, an invitation to God's grace and mercy. Yeah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship.